Let's get things started here at Snow Creek Kitchen with Chef James Porter, an old friend from Petite Maison. It's good to have you back on the, on the show. Thank you very much. We were trying to remember, has it been like a year? It's I been think? a year, a little while. Yeah, so you've stayed busy. And but not forgotten. Just, exactly. How could we forget? That's How true. could we forget? We're going to be making a couple pumpkin dishes, as we've been saying over and over. And we're going to start with a ravioli. A pumpkin ravioli. Okay. Very simple. And everything that we're making today is super easy in the house. And, you know, when we talk about pumpkins and, and buying the canned stuff versus roasting it yourself, now, if you really want to go authentic, this is the way to do it. But right. i got to tell you, the, the, the canned pumpkin, the organic canned pumpkin, it's pretty darn tasty. Okay. But this is. Now, do they add any extra sweeteners in those? Most that, of them don't. Most okay. of them don't. But if you, if, you, if you read the back of it, it's very simple. Okay. We're going to take, we've taken a pumpkin and we're going to use this for all of our dishes today. So this is very, very simple. And so we're using something like this. This one over here, here, which is is a roasting pumpkin or a baking pumpkin. Not to be confused with this. That is correct. The jack o' lantern pumpkin. This is the carving pumpkin, <laughs> the big one. So what we've done is we've taken it, we've cut it, we add a little bit of olive oil. We're just going to drizzle it on top and we're going to put it in the oven for about 350 with convection on just to roast it. Okay. And again, you can do this ahead of time. You can bag it once it's done, put it in your freezer. So anytime that you wish to use it, you've got it ready to go and you don't have to go through this process. I'm going to do that. I'm going to take a picture of it and then I'm going to pin it because I haven't seen that on Pinterest yet, but it's one of those tips that I know would go crazy. It's an amazing tip. Now, like <laughs> modern TV, we've taken them out. We've got them roasted. Okay. Which is fun and easy. And this is what they'll, they're, they're, they're supposed to really kind of reduce in size. They like reduce in size because they have about 90, 80% water, I should say. Uh -huh. I don't think so I knew they're, that. They're going to they're gonna do so a little bit. Now, we're going to make our easy ravioli. We've taken some of our diced meat, our pumpkin meat, if you will, and we're going to add it into a bowl here. It's nice and roasted flavor. And then we've got our cheese, our ricotta cheese to make our ravioli. And you can do this. There's a few ways to do it. You can grind it up. I like to make them a little bit and on the whole. Grinding, what, how well, do you I can grind? put it in a food processor okay, if you it, will. Okay. So we're going to season up a little salt, a little pepper. Add that in here. We've got a little bit of sage. We're going to add this in there. I find that I, it seems like every year I see that combination of pumpkin and sage. Very classic with a lot of squashes. They, they've got that earthiness, and then the sage just kind of has that wonderful, real poppy, floral sort of flavor to it. Now we've mixed this up, and we're going to add, add a little bit of egg yolk in there, and that, that egg yolk is going to just act as a binder. And again, these recipes are all on TV. You guys have them. Um, I like doing it this way because when you bite into it, you get that kind of explosion of pumpkin. And it makes so it does the sage make now? Okay, let's let's define pumpkin. Is it pumpkin sweet or is it pumpkin? It's pumpkin on the savory kind of, side. It's not side. pumpkin pie. It's pumpkin on the on yeah, the savory okay. side. Okay. So then what we've done is we've taken our mix and we've got these wonderful ravi or wonderful wonton wrappers and they're fun to do raviolis with. We buy them at the grocery store. And we take a little bit of our egg yolk. And we just around the outside of it. How do we make them not crack when we're, we're playing with them? Well, we move very quickly. Okay. And we don't let them dry out. Now, these have kind of dried out a little bit, but see how pliable, you know, they're nice so and pliable. So when we're doing it at home, would you just recommend like a damp cloth When you're top? doing them at home, keep them under a little bit of towel. Okay. And that'll, that'll help out quite a bit. So we filled them and we've got them. And then we've, and then you want to make sure you seal them up. And we're sealing them with the egg yolk? Seal them with the egg yolk. And that egg yolk is going to act as like a nice little glue to it. So when, they, when you fry them, all the pumpkin stays on the inside. Amazing flavor. So we're gonna take these. I, oh my gosh, I'm so making this. I can't even tell. Like I, I'm hanging on every word. Okay. So now when we're frying things in the house, okay. we need to be very, very careful because you don't want the grease to explode. You don't want it to start to splatter. And when you lay things in the fryer, you kind of just want to lift them in there. Now, you don't want to drop them, but just kind of let them float. How do I give us the right temperature so I don't have like crazy? Acid? You're gonna put it on, put it on medium heat, and okay. let it slowly heat up versus trying to turn it on high and, and then turn it. it on low and then turn it back on high have and you back on low. Me <laughs> I do that all the time because I'm too impatient to wait for the process for it to slowly heat up. <laughs> and these are gonna, these are gonna brown, and we're just gonna, we're just gonna maneuver them around in the pan a little bit. All right. And again, you want to be very That's careful. Fast. Well, this might be a little bit on the warm side, but it's okay. Okay. Because your pumpkin's already cooked, your cheese is you can eat raw, and the egg is just gonna the egg will cook very quickly. So you're not gonna risk anything by undercooking them. Okay. But you want them nice and crunchy. Now, are, are, can we somehow boil these, and they wouldn't be like a 
a baked you, or you would, you would writing. Not, you would not want to do that with the wonton wrappers because boiled wonton wrappers are pretty... Nasty? Grim. <laughs> Let, <laughs> let's uh, let's that say. Now. And then we've got our nice little raviolis. And to finish this dish off, oops, what makes it really fun is we're going to add a little bit of, a little bit of butter here because what's a great ravioli without butter? We're just going to stick a little bit of this in the pan. Now we're going to add some of this sage really, really quickly. And hear that? Yeah. It, it's crackling. We want that. You want that little, that little, uh, that little sound? Okay. And we're just going to we're just going to reduce that a, a second. We're not going to let it get darkened too much. Okay. Um, and then we're going to drizzle it right over the top, garnish it with a little bit more sage, and it's a nice little easy dish. Now you could you could use these and 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 just have them with like a little bit of dip if you chose a, a little you know like oh, a little cream cheese dip. That's what I was going to ask. What kind of dip we could do? You could do cream cheese dip. Anything that you would put on a bagel, you could use as a cream. You could use as a dipper to this. I like it. And if you wanted to thin it out a little bit, you could do that as uh -oh. well. You know, here's what I love. My favorite thing. This is, you know, good chef, and all of his his cruets are like dinged, danged, and just like all broken up. These oh, have yeah. good Views, experience. These have experience I on them. I love them. I love.